Hey everybody, I'm Justin Zarr with bowhunting.com. Welcome to another Bowhunt 101 video where today we are taking a look at the anatomy, all the different parts and features of a compound bow. All right, so today we are going to be going over the anatomy of a compound bow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through all the different parts of a bow and give a little bit of an explanation about what, what each one of them do. Uh, I'm going to start at the top and we're going to work our way down. So let's get started. So first thing we're going to start with is going to be the cams or the cam system of a bow. When people talk about the cams, they're talking about this right here and this right here. A lot of people still refer to them as wheels. Uh, and the reason for that is back in the early days of compound archery uh, in the 70s and into the early 80s, they actually were wheels. They were completely circular. Uh, a cam indicates that it is not circular and that the hole is actually offset within uh, this device right here, hence the term cam. So the bow we're looking at today is a Matthews VXR. This is what's referred to as a dual cam bow, which means it has a cam on either side. These cams are slaved together so that they rotate at the exact same uh, speed as you are drawing the bow back. Uh, there are other bow cam systems out there. Uh, traditionally, there aren't really too many uh, dual wheel bows out there anymore, but what you will find are some single cam bows. A single cam bow often has one cam on the bottom and then a wheel on the top. Uh, and there's a lot of different reasons for that that we're not going to go into today. They draw a little bit differently, they shoot a little bit differently, they tune differently, just kind of a different type of cam system. But most of your modern bows nowadays are going to have a dual cam system. Now, while we're looking at the cams, well, we'll just dive right into the strings and the cables since that's what actually connects the cams together. So this is your string here. The string is what you draw back, right? Pretty straightforward. Now the cables are what you see underneath here. And the cables, much like the term wheel, uh, is a holdover from the early days of archery. When compound bows were first hitting the market, these cables here were actually made of steel cable. Uh, they were rubber coated steel cables, hence the term cable. So way back in the day when you needed new cables and a new string, you legitimately got metal cables and then a new fiber based string. But today's modern bows use the same uh, you know, high performance fibers for both the cables as well as the string. So the cable, or I'm sorry, the string is what you draw back, right? Pretty straightforward. The cables are actually what's doing all the work. A lot of people believe that the string is what's doing the work, but as you draw this bow back, these cables are drawing the limbs of the bow in, and that's actually what's creating all of your energy. So most of your stress uh, on your bow and what's creating your energy is done in the cable system. The string is really just the mechanism by which you draw it back and then it propels the string, or I'm sorry, the arrow forward. So that's your string and cables. Uh, if we look at this string right here, obviously we've got a couple different pieces on it. These little guys hanging off it right here are like string silencers. So these are meant to absorb noise and vibration from the string when you shoot the bow. Uh, inside of that, you're gonna see these little things. Underneath here are gonna be brass knocking points. Uh, a lot of people call these like speed knocks or speed buttons. This is just weight that's added to the bowstring in strategic locations uh, to give it a little bit more mass uh, and help it actually shoot a little bit faster. So that's what these are. Every manufacturer is gonna have maybe a different amount of these or they're gonna be in a different location depending on the bow model because they all shoot a little bit differently. But that's what those are. Uh, as we work our way down here, you're gonna see a peep sight, which is in my string right here. Peep sight is what you're gonna look through when you have the bow at full draw. You're gonna look through the peep sight, line up your pin on the target that you are shooting at. So you got your peep sight. Uh, right here, we've got what's called a string loop or a D loop. Uh, very popular with you know modern archery equipment. Back in the old days, we used to just grab the string and pull it back with our fingers. Now that most people are using mechanical release aids, we connect that release aid to the string loop and then your arrow knock sits right in between this. Provides a little bit more uh, uniform consistency in the way that you shoot your bow and it also prevents from wearing out your bowstring. If you wear out one of these loops, you just tie a new one on, you're good to go. If you wear out your bowstring, uh, you gotta put a new string on, that can be a pain in the butt. Uh, the last thing we'll look at on the bowstring is going to be this black piece right here. This is typically called your center serving. And what this is, is this is a different type of material that's wound around the string. And its purpose is to help protect the string in these wear points. So this is where your knock attaches right here. Uh, so this just helps protect your string, provides a better fit for the knock of your arrow 
when it's connected to the string. So that's going to be your string and then your cable system. You're going to see your cable system runs through this device right here. This has uh, got a lot of different terms on what people call it, depending on the bow model. Uh, a lot of folks call it a cable guard. Uh, in this case, it's typically called a roller guard because it features these rollers inside. And the purpose of this right here is to just pull these cables off to the side so that they don't interfere with your arrow when you shoot. Uh, if this was not here, these cables would naturally be directly in line with your cam system, which would prevent you from being able to shoot the bow. So uh, a cable guard or a roller guard, all that just doing is, is holding these cables kind of off to the side. So uh, as we come back up to the top of the bow, we're going to look at the limbs. This is what's called a split limb system. So we have two completely independent limbs right here. The limbs are what are going to flex uh, as you draw the bow back, and then they're going to help uh, flex the other direction and then propel the arrow forward when you shoot. Um, there are still some single limb model bows out there. So what you'll see is instead of two of these, they'll have one little bit wider single limb with kind of a Y in the top where the cam sits in the middle of that. But it seems like the most popular design on modern bows these days is going to be this split limb configuration. The other thing we'll talk about here is going to be the axle. Uh, the axle for your cam actually goes right through the limb, goes through the cam system and then it's attached on the other side. So this axle is what your cam or your wheel is going to rotate around as you draw the bow back. So speaking of axle, one term that you may hear thrown around a lot is going to be axle to axle length. So that's going to be the, di the distance from your bottom axle to your top axle. Uh, and that measurement is just going to indicate how long the bow is. Um, everybody seems to prefer different length bows, maybe for different types of situations. For ground blinds or, or compact areas, you might want a, a shorter axle to axle bow. You're talking 28 to maybe 30 inches. Uh, anything uh, like tree stand hunting, field archery, target archery, people tend to prefer a little bit longer axle to axle bow. This one here is 31 and a half, maybe all the way up to like 34. That's going to be most of your hunting bows nowadays. Uh, there are a few that are longer than that. Uh, a lot of your target bows now are going to be usually 38 inches and up, sometimes over 40 inches for your target bows, but those can prove to be a little bit uh, difficult to wield around when you're in a tree or in the woods or in the ground blind. So most bow hunters are going to stick with something between, let's say, 28 and 33 inches seems to be about the sweet spot for most bow hunters in terms of axle to axle length. Uh, as we move down this bow, we've got, obviously, we talked about the limbs. Next thing we're going to see here is the limb pocket. The limb pocket is actually what is going to attach your limbs to the body of the bow, which is the riser. So limb pockets come in a variety of different configurations and different uh, materials. So most of your higher end bows are going to come with machined aluminum limb pockets. Some of your mid-range and value price bows are going to come with plastic limb pockets. Uh, the difference there obviously being a little bit tighter tolerances with the metal and also just a little bit stronger. On the outside of the limb pocket here, you're going to see the limb bolt. The bolt is what runs through the limb pocket and holds it into the riser. The bolt, the limb bolt, you're going to have one on either end. That's also going to be how you adjust the draw weight of your bow. You screw it in to increase your draw weight. You screw it out to decrease your draw weight. So that's going to be your limb bolt right here. Now, the main body of the bow, the things, if you took somebody that didn't know anything about archery and you said, which, which part of this is, is the bow? It makes up the bow itself. What they're going to be talking about is this right here, which is the riser of the bow. Modern bows have pretty long risers, right? This particular bow here is 31 inches from axle to axle. The riser makes up probably 28 of those inches. If you were to look back on some of the older model bows from the early days, they had much shorter risers and much longer limbs. Uh, as bow technology has continued to progress over the years, what we've seen is longer, more stable risers and much shorter and more compact limbs. What that does is it makes for a more accurate bow that is also a lot quieter uh, and less vibration in today's bows versus bows from uh, back in the early days of archery. So this is going to be your riser. Most of them are going to be machined aluminum. Uh, there are still some cast risers out there and, and things like that, but most of your, your modern bows are going to be made from machined aluminum and they're, they're going to be dipped uh, either in a solid color or in a camo pattern or maybe powder coated uh, to get the different color. 
Riser configuration is going to vary wildly between different manufacturers. So you're going to see different types of cutouts. You might see a bridge type riser that's got a big piece back here to help with stability. You're going to see some of these little cutouts, these riser cages for stability. Like every manufacturer is going to be different and that's kind of the hallmark of their bow. It's usually the riser design and the cam design. That is really what differentiates one manufacturer from another. So this is our riser here. As we work down, Every bow riser is going to have a couple universal mounting attachment points on it. One of them is going to be some screw holes right here where the, uh, your sight is attached. So every bow that you buy is going to have holes pre-drilled and pre-tapped in it of the same size. So any bow sight will fit on any bow out there. This is a universal attachment. Same with the arrow rest. It's going to have a hole right here. Uh, in a lot of cases, this is referred to as like a burger hole because there used to be a product that you would install here called a burger button back in the old days. So this is uh, your burger hole right here, which is where your arrow rest is mounted. So you're going to have, again, that's universal between all bows. So basically any arrow rest or just about any arrow rest and just about any sight should fit on any bow that you purchase. Um, right in here, you're going to see an area of the riser that's kind of got like a cutout. This is typically referred to as the arrow shelf. Uh, and again, that's a holdover from the old days when people actually used to shoot an arrow right off the shelf. This was used to hold the arrow. If you look at like traditional archery, they're shooting off of an arrow shelf because there is no rest. Um, it's not really a shelf because the, most arrows don't touch it anymore. They're actually gonna be launched from your arrow rest, but still called an arrow shelf right here. Below that, obviously we've got your grip. Grip's gonna be another one of those things that varies wildly from manufacturer to manufacturer. Um, everything from the style of the grip, the angle, how big it is, how wide it is, what material it's made out of. Uh, a lot of grips or um, companies, I should say, uh, offer different grip styles with their bows now. So some uh, offer like a full over molded grip here, or you can remove this and you can shoot it with side plates uh, if you like something a little bit thinner. There's a lot of different grip options out there really to allow you to customize and tailor uh, the fit and finish for the way that you like to shoot your bow. But you've got your grip here. As we work down, we've got a string stop right here. So what this does is it's just basically a rubber stopper on the end of a carbon rod. And when you shoot your bow, this string is going to slam into it and it's going to stop this string from coming forward and oscillating around. That oscillation tends to create vibration and noise when you shoot your bow. So in order to uh, help eliminate some of that, that's what this string stop does. Most bow manufacturers are going to include a single string stop on their bows. Uh, some of them, like bear archery, do actually uh, include two of them. They have one on the bottom and then another one on the top up here to just further help dampen that noise and vibration. Uh, while we're talking about dampening noise and vibration, a lot of bow manufacturers are going to build components into the riser of their bow that's going to help cut down on that noise. So Matthews has what they call their enha um, enhanced harmonic stabilizer, which is this piece right here. And when you shoot your bow, this thing kind of wiggles around a little bit. And again, it absorbs some of that noise and vibration that these bows uh, generate when you shoot them. And that's part of the reason that modern bows today, compared to the stuff we had even you know, yeah, 20, 30 years ago, we've made a big jump, but even looking back at 10, 15 years ago, we've made a huge jump in bow technology, just in the way that they sound and feel and shoot due to the lack of noise and vibration. Um, noise and vibration has also helped cut down by your stabilizer. So most bows do not come with the stabilizer pre-installed unless you buy it like a, a package bow, but they will have a mounting hole. Again, this is a universal size, so all bows are going to have uh, a stabilizer mounting hole on the front of them. You could screw in any type of stabilizer that you want. A lot of your bows, not all of them, but a lot of them are now going to be including a rear stabilizer hole as well. As rear or side stabilizers begin uh, or continue to increase in popularity, more and more, more and more bow manufacturers are putting this rear stabilizer bushing uh, in the riser right here. So that's something to also be on the lookout for. And uh, I guess the last thing that we're going to talk about here is one other measurement that you're going to often hear about when people talk about bows, and that's going to be your axle, not, I'm sorry, not axle to axle, it's going to be your brace height. Your brace height is going to be the distance between the throat of the grip and the bowstring right here. Most hunting bows uh, are going to be somewhere between six and seven inches. I think over time, bow hunters have um, kind of gravitated toward that size. It allows the bow to produce plenty of speed, but also be fairly forgiving, and then hopefully not hit your arm when you shoot. When you look at some of the more aggressive 
bows that are oriented towards super fast speeds, you might see lower brace heights, sometimes as low as four and a half or five inches. Uh, for most people, they find those bows very difficult to shoot, difficult to tune. They have problems with them hitting, not necessarily their arm, but maybe their clothing when they're, they're shooting in a hunting situation. So that six to seven inches seems to be the sweet spot. Uh, some folks prefer a brace height that's over seven inches, maybe eight or nine inches. Uh, those bows tend to be a little bit slower, uh, but also more forgiving and a less tendency to potentially hit your arm. So when you hear somebody talk brace height, it's the distance from the string to the throat of the grip right here. So that is going to be all of the major components of a modern compound bow. Hopefully that provides you guys some insight if you're out there looking for a new bow or maybe you're at a bow shop and uh, you know, you're talking to the tech behind the counter, you're talking to one of your friends and he starts mentioning axle to axle length, brace height, you know, what strings you should shoot, what size peep sight. Hopefully you know a little bit more about what all those things are and how they work together in a bow. So we appreciate you guys watching. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a lot of great archery and bow hunting content uh, coming your way very soon. So again, appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.